Hey everybody, I'm really excited to talk to you today about Arkham Asylum. It is one of my favorite comics, and in fact, I think it's the first comic book that I bought that really moved the needle for me as far as like the art of comics, and that's really why I wanted to kind of share this one as one of the early episodes. Um, so before we kind of do a, di a deep dive into the book, let's just talk a little bit about the creator, some of the history, and that kind of stuff. So, um, Arkham Asylum, the full title is called Arkham Asylum, A Serious House on a Serious Earth, uh, was, is written by Grant Morrison, and the illustrator is Dave McKean. Grant Morrison, as you may or may not know, is a Scotman from uh, Glasgow, uh, born 1960. He started out in his uh, kind of creative endeavors uh, in a band called The Mixers. Started working for Marvel UK and then got a gig working at uh, 2000 AD. And that's really when DC got alerted to his presence and his kind of skill set. He started pitching some ideas and books for DC. Um, one of the stories uh, was Animal Man. And he also did a 48-page Batman one-shot, which later would become this Arkham Asylum story. So he's really early in the game. He actually hasn't had that much time doing comics before he gets this gig. And it is an amazing book that we're going to dive into. You know, Grant is known for kind of the more esoteric kind of writing. Uh, he's really interested in the kind of hermetic, occult kind of uh, mystery schools and magic and those kind of things and LSD and altered states of mind. Really heady stuff. Um, after this, we're going to see some of those flavors in this book, but then really when he goes into some of his own kind of creation stuff like Invisibles and, and that kind of stuff, we really see him kind of just go go wild with it. Um, currently, he's the editor-in-chief of Heavy Metal Magazine, uh, definitely something that we're going to talk about on this channel. Huge fan of Heavy Metal. And uh, probably we're going to focus, when we do those, it's going to be 1970s, 1980s books. Those are like my favorite period, those first first decade or so. Um, and he's also writing for DC right now again. He's writing some Green Lantern. Uh, but he's written for Marvel, DC. He's written everywhere. And he's just amazing, always dressed sharp. Uh, I met him a couple times at uh, San Diego Comic Con. Really nice guy, seemed to be pleasant. And... Uh, very intelligent guy, thoughtful man. Uh, Dave McKean, an Englishman, uh, again, couple born in 63. He uh, went to school for design, illustration, and film. Uh, after schooling, he did some work. His first really big comics work was with Neil Gaiman, and they did a book called Violent Cases in 1987. After that, he did Black Orchid with Neil Gaiman. And then after Black Orchid was this. Uh, so again, a guy who hasn't had that many years in the business, but he really just blew it out of the park. And so really just, it's an amazing book. Now I got this when I was a kid, when I was about, I was a freshman. Uh, so it was really beyond me. But it was a $20, you know, this was a $20 hardcover. And at the time in, 90, in 89, when this came out, that was when Tim Burton's Batman came out. And so when we're talking about big cultural moments, Tim Burton's Batman was massive. Like, it just changed everything. Similar to the um, Adam West Batman when that came out in the 60s, how that kind of, like, changed stuff. When Burton came out, it was... Burton's, Burton's Batman just like everything was about Batman and in high school you know everyone's wearing the Batman shirts it was just Batman crazy so this came out just a few months after that movie I picked it up because it was Batman and I was just immediately over my head like immediately blown away and like I can't even process this it was 20 bucks for the hardcover and it's like 120 pages that was a lot for me back then but um, I was into art, and I was into Batman. I'm like, I'm going to do this. So um, we're definitely going to talk about that. You know, this sold uh, 182,000 copies. 
in hardcover, and then another about eighty-five thousand in softcover. Huge hit, did great work. Why don't we stop chit-chatting? Let's get into it, okay? Let's dive into the book. Okay, guys, here we go. Let's talk about this book. Um, beautiful hardcover. Let me say right now that um, because of this glossy paper, there might be a little bit of a reflection, and I'm going to try to do my best to avoid that. But until I get a massive scrim for the lights on the top of my ceiling, um, I'm going to have some issues with this. I'm going to do my best, but this glossy paper just captures light really well, and I need a I need a massive like scrim, um, and I don't have one yet. So bear with me. Uh, first, right off the bat, let's just start with how the design is so different. This is definitely, I would say, a you know graphic novel type of of design in the book, um, and you know DC had done other graphic novels before. This isn't the first one, of course, but this really kind of had this prestige kind of format, um, and I mean that prestige, not the not the actual comic prestige format but like just this really nice really um classy again i'm gonna say fine art a lot because i feel that's what it is it's really bringing that kind of air to things um yeah mckean is really known for his mixed media and uh you know photography mixed in with art and as you can tell right away we have these nails we have all these really cool kind of kind of imagery that's coming out. Looks like maybe with some whiteout or acrylic uh, paint here. You know, he's got this. Again, this this stuff could be in museums. You know, this, uh, this is just amazing gallery type work. And, of, you know, this is, of course, a fossilized kind of uh, bat. Here we go, Arkham Asylum, a serious house on a serious earth. And just amazing stuff. I mean, this was just, um, this was just the bee's knees, man. Can't get better than this. You'll notice that Karen Berger, uh, she's the editor here, and she's probably editing Swamp Man, a Swamp Thing, right about now. And this is before Vertigo, but this is right there on the cusp of when Vertigo is like starting to, starting to come out. Um, and this is, you could tell, this is one of her, probably one of her favorite project she did again sorry about this glare i love that um that watch right there man i really need to get a scrim that's bugging the heck out of me okay boom we just fixed it i just said did a quick cut i found something that's working because you know what that's how we roll we're just gonna like do this as we go so i fixed it i think i put this big thing <laughs> i won't tell you what i used i used something to block out the ceiling light I think that works much better. I need you guys to see this art. So I'm glad that worked out. Okay, there we go. Um, we start off this story and really kind of, it, it does a flashback, the story of Amadeus Arkham, who's kind of the creator of this institution. Um, and that's going in parallel with the Batman story. So we start off with Arkham, um, excuse me, with, with Amadeus Arkham talks about his uh, mother, and his mother's insane. This image here, as a, you know, 15-year-old, whatever I was, uh, of the old woman with these uh, roaches or beetles coming out of her mouth, uh, has haunted me <laughs> literally for decades. It still is traumatic. Uh, I love the texture here. Again, I'm going to just talk about this beautiful, beautiful art. I just really love... The, the photography, the photorealistic stuff, the airbrush, it's all these different techniques. It really is, again, this fine art. It's using actual photography now with diffused, um, you know, out of focus stuff, diffused lighting, just really great. So, you know, the story's going to that um, Mama, Mama Arkham is insane and Amadeus is having to take care of her. Then we're jumping into the Batman story. And notice how the Batman story now is not kind of real. This is all kind of an almost photography. It's the real world. And then the Batman story is uh, almost like comics, right? It's now, it's it's penciled. It's it's uh, fantasy. Um, I really just, I like the way this rolls out. And so he goes, you know, very neat, stylized kind of look of him. Again, kudos to the 
letterer of this book. Uh, sometimes the lettering kind of is incorporated in the art, I'm assuming, um, in the actual boards of the art. But the lettering here is great. They use this red type for Joker, and it's and it's brilliant. Um, it's the only complaint I would say to this book is is it a bit sparse, and so it can be a quick read. I think part of the magic of this book is to let the art sink in and really take in the art uh, as part of the story. Because if you're just to go and just read the words. Uh, you could bang this out in you know half an hour, 20 minutes. So I would say really when you go and read this, really take some time to just look at the art, ponder it, and let that be uh, a big influence of how you read the story. This is a great panel here. So basically uh, Batman needs to go into Arkham. The inmates are running the asylum, literally. Joker is taunting Batman to say, get over here. If you don't do it soon, um, people are going to die. And, uh, and then we go back again, this flashback with Arkham, with uh, Amadeus and how he's dealing with his mother being insane and trying to decide what is he going to do uh, to kind of fix this. Is this something that he can do to help others so that they don't um, go through this? So maybe some kind of a mental institution. Oh, I love this. One of the great images of Joker, and he uses this almost like a chiaroscuro kind of way of, of blending the shadows and light. Very high contrast. I really love the way Joker is really lit on all his panels. Uh, and half of Joker is always in shadow. I just love that. And the green, it's just so evocative and uh, arresting. Look at this. This is a wonderful panel. Um, just wonderful stuff. So this is this is great, man. I'm just so stoked to talk about this. I love this book. This is good stuff. This is the art of comics, man. We're gonna go. We're gonna talk about these books next up. We're gonna do uh, Jimmy Corrigan, um, because I love Chris Ware. We're gonna do. We're gonna do it all, man. Comment below what you want me to talk about. We'll just bang it out. Look at this wonderful painting. He's really mixing. He does these really uh, paints. He'll he'll pencil. He'll, and then he does these collages. So now Batman is here. We see the the madcap, you know, feast of fools. Uh, and then now we're seeing some of the imagery too that Morrison is telling McKean to, to do, you know. Uh, we've got some of these uh, polyhedral kind of drawings. We're going to get into some tarot card kind of uh, symbolism and things like that. You know, we're he's really starting to show what he's interested in what what morrison is interested in putting that into the writing uh, classic nine panel grid huge fan of that i really love this idea this concept of of changing two face from instead of just having this duality um binary decision making to moving it up to a six-sided dice to moving it up further into a, a deck of 52 cards and a tarot card set. And so it's building out his choices, but then it kind of backfires, right? Where Two-Face, Harvey can't even make the simplest of uh, bodily functions without consulting, you know, the deck. Um, and so it's kind of um, backfiring a bit. And Batman is so, um, you know, Batman realizes, I think, that he's, kind of part of this group and then he should I, I you know joker's really not a villain in this at all it's it's very interesting we're going to reveal later who the, the villain is but joker is simply wanting batman to be there to be there amongst them and to for batman for bruce to realize who he truly is and he deserves and belongs to be in the insane asylum now remember this is 89 this is kind. This is a lot more newer idea than it is now. Now, I think a lot of us have kind of already given the idea that okay, Batman's insane. You know, Bruce, you can't be walking around as a vigilante like a bat and be a normal person. You know, that's kind of more of a standard concept. But back in '89, this was kind of new. This was a new idea to think about Batman as. Wait a minute. You mean Batman should be here with these guys? He belong. He's this is their people. You know that kind of a thing was kind of new. So I liked it. Love this. Love these shots. 
I would love to see his uh, method because he make he he does the detail and kind of the rendering to make it look real, but clearly it's very hyper uh, stylized. You know, it's not you know there are no models that he took foot photographs of with that face. You know, so he's really melding in those things. Again, now we're going back into Amadeus's story uh, with his mother. His mother commits suicide. You know, we're trying to um, uncover that. He goes on this this uh, kind of pilgrimage of different philosophies around the world. He plays chess with um, Aleister Crowley, who's kind of a classic, you know, historical figure about, you know, uh, hermetic thoughts and the Golden Dawn and all that kind of stuff, uh, which is kind of fun to, to read about. Again, the art is just breathtaking. Here's what I was talking before about really mixing in kind of a penciled, you know, uh, rendered with some painted. You know, David Mack does a little bit of this too in Kabuki. Uh, midway through his Kabuki, he starts kind of doing this mixed media and kind of combining. In fact, I mean, this could even be something he took from. This could, I mean, this with the triangles, that even looks like a David Mack thing. So maybe David Mack owes a little bit to McKean. Clearly, he was aware of him. Uh, wonderful. This is just wonderful stuff here. And I guess this is the villainous part where uh, Joker now tells Batman, okay, you got a time limit, you got an hour to go get a few things done. If not, we're going to start killing people, and then the, the inmates are just going to take over completely. So now it's this little trial, you know, uh, through the labyrinth, uh, the Minotaur going through, and he's going to face all these different kind of classic uh, villains of Arkham. So... He, you know, he faces all these different uh, people. Look at this blood. I love this stuff, and I love that. I mean, just really evocative again stuff. Wonderful things. And, uh, you know, Joker decides, okay, uh, we're not going to give you an hour. We'll just do it now. And so they're releasing all the bad guys like Killer Croc and Mad Hatter and so forth. And now we get, we're going, flashing back a little bit into Amadeus. He learns that his mom killed himself. Look at this. I love this. these pages. Um, he's incorporating this lace, which is really nice. I would love to see the originals. And then, you know, he's, he's gluing the lace down, painting it over that. And he's going to use this lace, uh, this mixed media, um, just draping for cloth for the rest of the story. Um, this, I mean, this looks like this could be in a fine art gallery, this piece right here. I mean, this is just very uh very kind of fine art again this is not comics right this is it's storytelling but it's not uh what you would think goes through these different characters like where he just breaks his leg he just like snaps his leg uh and batman's not goofing around he doesn't have much compassion he's there you know he knows he's on the time limit he's just gonna go through here and just start Whomping on people, he just and he just runs past them too. He's not even gonna mess with Scarecrow. He's not gonna screw around. He's there to get what he needs to get. Mad Hatter's there. I mean, just really, just the art is so so good. Uh, we're doing these flashbacks now. Um, Amadeus has started this this kind of clinic, this asylum. He's the head um, doctor there. He finds this guy who tortured his family, his his own like a uh, wife and children, and the first uh, patient in the asylum is the murderer of his family, and so he treats him, and and you know as he treats him, he winds up actually killing him, and then now we're starting to see that Amadeus has issues. And he's not this benevolent doctor, but that actually he is becoming insane. And then we get, okay, before I get into that, look at this. I just got to show you this. This is a photograph. This is a photograph. The, the art had this switchboard. He had real wires come in here. And then he had the wires go into the canvas. And then he's painting over that. It's really br brilliant. You got to get the original and look at this. Um, it's just really cool. Again, mixing this really cool media, and I don't know how he's photo you know photographing this stuff, but it's really really neat. 
I love it. This is like one of my favorites. Just this concept, this idea, you know. Um, this character Zeus something, I think. Prometheus Zeus or something like that. Um, just brilliant, brilliant colors. Yeah, so Amadeus turns out that he's not so benevolent. He's going crazy. And then the concept is, is, is it more than that? And is the Arkham asylum itself insane does it have kind of a personality or is it cursed in some way and so um that's where we kind of start going into that mythology of the bat and how the creator of this asylum saw a bat and how and how now batman is here to either excise the haunted asylum or to somehow come into its its hearth as the bat symbol that it that belongs there you know uh so it's really kind of neat ideas playing on the idea of uh arkham being alive and it needing this this bat symbol yeah you know he goes into here about seeing this bat symbol um and this was like you know 100 you know 100 years ago and that the mom didn't kill herself but actually he killed his mother right so Amadeus Arkham killed his mom and he is insane the guy who set this whole place up was crazy either he became crazy or the building itself made him crazy and then we go into some kind of a uh, witchcraft magic again creating this kind of a uh, uh, banishment spell or a holding spell for Batman himself so as he comes in he sees that ring of salt around the building, and that is to kind of bind him there in the home. So, again, Morrison really playing off on the hermetic kind of occult stuff, uh, which personally, as a free and accepted Mason, uh, I'm a master Mason in my lodge, I really like that stuff. So I'm into that kind of uh, um, esoteric um, philosophies. So it, I, I dig it. Um, and, um, here we go. The, I just, again, the colors, the paper was great. You know, back in 89, I can't think of how many book. you know, Watchmen, you know, Dark Knight, none of those books had paper like this. You know, they were earlier than this, but I mean, uh, this paper was reserved for only special projects. I mean, that was why it was 20 bucks was this nice paper. And, and I think there's no way you could look at this art on anything better, uh, excuse me, on anything less than this. You've got to see it on this type of paper. This holds the ink so well in the colors. Um, great stuff. Look at this. I love, again, I love this this super high contrast, really white coming out. And the shadows, you rarely see much of his face. The lettering's so good. Yeah, this is, this actually, I thought of this. This reminds me of The Dark Knight, right? On the cover there with the lightning. Flipping, great panels. And then we're going back, and then we, we see that uh, Two-Face actually lied. He let him go. See, the idea was Batman can go when he flips the coin. Heads he goes, tail, uh, scarred tails, He's uh, Batman gets killed, and he lies. We find out that it was actually scarred, so he could have, he should have uh, had him killed. But let him go. And uh, beautiful book. Go, it reads a little quick. We, again, you got to really take in the art. Um, and then this is kind of interesting. He, he added these extra pages, and it's kind of like a bio kind of little snapshot with some really neat art in here. I just really like the um, the design and the the kind of multimedia collage work. It's really great collage, and it's almost like a poetry or little little bits of of their characters and in the in the type and the style of what they would say or what they're all about maxi zeus that's what the guy was called uh, really brilliant stuff what about him yeah look at this i mean just gorgeous stuff one of my favorite books that's it that's uh, arkham arkham asylum man uh love this book so glad to share with you guys hey link you know, subscribe to this channel, um, comment below, do the bell icon. We got more coming up. I've got the next one is going to be 
Wally Wood. Wally Wood's 24 panels that always work. That's going to be a great one, almost like a how-to video, and then we're going to talk about um, a bunch of other stuff. Comment what you guys want me to talk about. Love talking about comics. Thank you guys for sticking with me. Uh, the Art of Comics. My name is Andre Salazar. Have a great day, guys. Bye.